Hello, everyone. Welcome to our marketing course. Today, we're diving into sales strategies. We'll primarily focus on the following two topics. First up, the characteristics of sales. Following that, we'll explore sales decision making. What exactly are the characteristics of sales? Let's find out together. Sales characteristics involve companies deploying salespeople to talk to one or more potential customers, engage in face to face presentations, persuade buyers, and actively promote products and services in our everyday lives. You've likely encountered salespeople. So, what makes for effective sales characteristics? Let's examine them together. Here are some of the advantages of sales. The first advantage is it fosters friendships between customers and salespeople through ongoing interactions, potentially leading to relationships beyond mere transactions. Secondly, it offers great flexibility. Sales content can be adjusted for different audiences. Third, sales are highly targeted, minimizing unnecessary effort. Most visitors to the store are likely to be genuine prospects, thus reducing ineffective labor. Most individuals entering the shop are usually those with specific needs, leading to less wasted effort. Next, it also benefits companies in understanding the market and enhancing decision making levels. The last point is its suitability for products that are expensive and have complex functionalities. For example, when buying a new smartphone, the salesperson will teach you how to demonstrate its operating skills. Moving on to the second topic, let's learn about sales decision making. Sales decision making refers to the process of designing and managing the sales team based on changes in the external environment and internal resource conditions. So, let's together examine the contents of sales decision making. First is to determine the objectives of the sales policy. Next, we need to determine the scale of sales to decide the size of the sales team. Then, assign sales tasks and execute them in this process. Assign the sales tasks. Let's look at how to determine the size of the marketing team. How to determine the size of the marketing team? There are three methods. The first method is the percentage of sales method. Percentage of sales naturally determines the proportion based on the share of sales. The proportion then determines the team size proportionally. The second method is the breakdown method. The breakdown method for standout salespeople, like we see in excellent e commerce sellers, for example, Li Jiaqi and Viaya. They represent teams with exceptionally outstanding abilities. The third method is the workload approach. The workload approach determines the size of the marketing team based on varying workloads. We've already covered how to determine the size of the marketing team. Once the size of the marketing team is established, how do we allocate tasks? Let's take a look at the following chart. This chart, based on market research, determines a job allocation for salespeople in a market. In the sales process, we have various marketing methods, such as face to face marketing, telemarketing, administrative marketing, and sales during waiting or travel times. Each has its own share. From the chart, it's evident that face to face marketing has the largest share, with face to face marketing at 28.8%. This is our highest proportion. Next is telemarketing, which we often encounter through various sales calls for real estate, renovations, etc. This type of telemarketing accounts for what percentage? It's as high as 25.1%. Furthermore, calls from customer service personnel constitute 12.7% of the proportion. Additionally, administrative sales activities account for 16%. Meanwhile, sales activities during waiting or travel represent 17.4% of the total. Next, let's look at the design of sales territories. Once we've decided on the sales methods, we need to divide the sales territories. So, in dividing sales territories, 
we must adhere to the following four principles. First, the territories should be easy to manage. Second, the sales potential of each territory should be easy to estimate. Third, strictly control the time spent on sales travel. Lastly, each workload and sales potential must be equal and sufficiently large. Once these principles are well understood, sales territories can be effectively divided. After the sales territories are divided and the sales team is confirmed, next, we start to execute the marketing specifically. How do we precisely increase our marketing probability to sell our products to the maximum extent? This requires digital marketing. To improve marketing performance through digital methods, we can consider whether to use face-to-face, -face, telephone, online, information platforms, TV direct selling, or shopping marketing, shopping program marketing, or direct mailing, etc. To precisely determine which method to use for promotion. By such means, we can greatly increase the sales quantity of the products. Today, we have jointly studied the characteristics of sales and also learned about sales decision making. Within the topic of sales decision making, we focused on the size of the sales team, sales, work arrangements, and the design of sales territories. That concludes everything we've learned today. Thank you, students, for watching.